Hi! Welcome to my Godot Dungeon Generator tutorial. In the last part, I showed you how we can implement movement like this and collision with the generated maze we constructed. Today, I want to add some rooms to this maze to really give it a bit more of a dungeon appeal. First of all, I'm temporarily turning off the current property on the player's camera 2D. That way we just get an overview of the entire map again, which we can still move around in of course. So we're quite tiny now. Right, so what we want to do is add an additional step to the maze generation at the end. I'm just gonna add a separate function for this. Let's call it room generator, I guess. First of all, I'm gonna give this a pass. Let's take a look at what we actually want to do here. What I was thinking for how to start constructing actual rooms in here is we have quite a lot of these little nubs here that are separating parts of the room. Like uh, if, if we were to remove these parts, we would have some rooms already as part of the generated maze. And that's what I'm going to start out with. So let's see. First of all, for i in range of width, we're going to be iterating over the entire maze a few times. J in range of height. So this part is going to come in a lot of use here. If get cell i, j is a wall which is currently black, then we want to know what's next to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say I want to have, yeah, I'm gonna say each tile wants to have at least two black or brown neighbors. Brown because the uh, currently inbuilt doors are gonna be considered as part of the wall for now. So let's see, var count equals zero for i offset in range minus one or two. Ah, that's a bit silly, isn't it? Minus one comma zero comma one. It's easier to read even if it doesn't change much else. Now we're going to ignore the tile we're currently on. So on the offset we don't want the combination 0, 0, but we do want all other combinations here. Uh, what's it actually complaining about? Oh, I put a second equals. That's not supposed to be there. Now if tile not files, close but not, tiles.black and brown dot has get cell i plus i offset and j plus j offset count increases by one. So we're checking all of the neighbor cells of whatever cell we're currently on and we want to know if they are black or brown. If so we count them, if not we don't. Then after we're out of that loop we can say if count is less than two Set cell i comma j comma tiles dot blue. Okay, now that's gonna run once for now. We're gonna want to run that several times actually, but for now I'm going to add this up here so we can see what happens. So that's added after all of the previous generation is complete. Of course I don't need all of that, just generator. And play. Okay, something went wrong. Uh, this is quite fascinating, but I must have done some indentation error, maybe? Yes, indeed, indentation error. This, no, this needs to go here. There we go. That looks a lot better already. Now let's see, does this account for everything? No, it doesn't. And the reason it doesn't is because it goes through them in order. 
and uh, here it's not gonna go travel backwards. So what we can change that is we can say var changed is equal to true. And then every time something actually changes about the maze, we are going to continue the loop. So while changed, that was supposed to have a D. While changed, we just continue going. And at the start of this, we can just say changed equals false. And at the end, let's see if we are changing something in which is here, then we just do changed equals true again and run it. Okay, yes, now it actually continues here. So what we can see is a whole lot of things are already marked as blue, which are supposed to be removed later. But since we are always checking for things that don't have two neighbors yet, so that have only one black neighbor, in this case, for example, this one has only one black neighbor, so it's marked as blue to be removed. But this one itself is also kind of looking like it could be part of the room, right? If we remove all the blue ones now, we're going to have a lot of janky edges. So what we can do about that is now this is going to appear next to every single blue one since it's never be gonna be able to reach a uh, junction like this. So everything that's next to a blue one now is also gonna get marked to be removed. So next step. And yeah, after this we're pretty much just gonna go over the entire maze again and check the new conditions. Now here, since I only have four directions I actually wanna check, I don't wanna check diagonals, I, so instead of using the method I have above here where I go over all options of over all combinations of minus one, zero, and one on both axes. Here I'm just gonna go over four vector twos. So that's going to be zero comma one, zero comma minus one, one comma zero, and minus one comma zero. And that's all combinations in there. Now if the cell at that position, I'm going to use cell V to, since we're using vectors now, at position vector 2 of i comma j plus off is equal to tiles dot blue set cell i comma j comma tiles dot red so we can see what happened. And in that case we can also break out of here. So let's see, let's take a look. Okay, now we see the rooms are gonna get quite a bit larger now actually. Some of them are. This here for example, instead of having this zigzag happening, this is going to be one room. Since we can just turn all the blue and red ones uh, white now. So I think that helps quite a bit already. So now to really get a view for that, let's actually make this white. Just with, just go over the entire maze again. 4j in range of height. If tiles dot blue comma tiles dot red dot has get cell i comma j set cell i comma j comma tiles dot white. So now all of the blue tiles and all of the red tiles are being turned back to white. Let's take a look. And this is already a lot larger. Now what we can see here is actually that the general structure of the maze isn't disturbed by this. Since all I did was remove some of the uh, little corners at the side, not all of them, some of them are still around, but I'm going to keep some of them. 
Uh, but yeah, due to that, we still have the same general shape, so we still have only one path from the start to the end. And I'd actually like to keep that, because I think... Well, it depends on what you're making. You can always just open up a wall or two somewhere if you really want to. But this allows for linear paths that still follow a randomized layout. Oh yeah, it's going to lead you to some of the rooms, and some of them are gonna be off to the side and not necessarily on the path to the end. Now at this point, technically we already have some rooms, but what I'm still gonna do is I'm gonna add some doors to the rooms. So just like we have an entry and exit door here marked in brown, I'm going to mark some more of them. The reason for that is so we can more simply tell apart what is going to be a pathway, like this thing here, and what is going to be a room, like this large open area here. The way we can do this is by once again iterating over the entire thing, actually a few times more. So let's see. First of all, let's mark everything that's clearly inside of a room. The easiest way to recognize that is to find white cells that are surrounded by white cells on all sides. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now if get cell ij is not white, I'm just going to continue uh, continue out of the iteration. In any other case, let's see, var in room is equal to true. So by default, we're going to assume that we're inside of a room. For i offset in minus one, zero, one. For j offset in minus one, zero, one. If the cell and that position uh, there's no more commas here is black, then in room is false. And we can break out here because we can't be in a room anymore anyhow. And if not in room. Break again, because we want to leave both of these loops then. Since they aren't going to change anything anymore at this point. Keeping staying in them wouldn't really break anything, it's just slower. Now, if we are in room at the very end, we can mark the cell. So let's just mark it with red. Since everything's white again, we have all the colors available. And this is what our rooms look like now. Obviously, the white surrounding areas around each of the red parts are also part of the room. I can actually mark these as well. If we just iterate again, we can do the same thing we did up here with the blue part. Let's see here. Here we checked for anything that's blue next to us. We can basically do the same thing here. Okay, I'm just gonna copy this over again. Since we'll need it. So, this time, what are we looking at? We are looking if get so ij doesn't equal white. We can leave because, again, we don't care about any non-black tiles. Otherwise, actually I'm not leaving space here, just to keep the code chunks combined for now. So for offset on the i-axis or x or whatever, 0, 1, j off in, uh, I should probably type 4, minus 1, 0, 1. If get cell i plus i off j plus j off is equal to tiles dot red. So if we have any red neighbors, then that's sufficient, isn't it? Set cell of i j tiles dot blue, and we can break out of here. 
And let's see. Uh, marked equals false. In this case, we can say marked equals true because we don't need to continue anymore. And this lets us leave the second loop quicker. If marked, break. Okay, let's see. Did I forget anything? Nope, nope, this looks fine. If there are any white tiles surrounding the red ones, these are now blue. Which, yeah, actually only white tiles could surround red ones since uh, that's how they were generated. So at this point we know exactly where our rooms start and end. Which means every white tile next to a blue tile now can be a door. So let's basically just do the same thing all over again. Let's just copy it. And this time we can say if the cell is not white, we still continue. It's basically the same code. I'm, I can just copy over the offset too. It's also the same offset. The only thing that changes is we want to see if it's brown instead. So yeah, honestly. Actually, yeah, that's, that seems like the easiest option. I'll copy this, I'll paste all of that, and I'll check now if it's um, blue. And if so, make it brown. It's the same code, but now we can be sure that it's something that's going to be outside of the room. And there we go, that's the correct tiles. This here should be a door, it's from a room leading into a hallway, leading into another room. A uh, very small hallway sometimes, that's fine. Sometimes longer ones. Yeah, works. So now we just gotta turn all of the red and blue stuff back to white to clean it up. That's simple enough as well. Actually, didn't I write that code just now? Yeah, I did. So let's just copy paste it. Why write it twice? Let's see, did I forget anything? Nope, everything cleaned up nicely and there we have our random generated dungeon which now actually has rooms. At this point we basically have everything playable. The character can also move around still. The doors currently don't do anything so we can move through them fine. And the rest is really just a matter of interior design like we can generate some structures that would spawn inside of here. We can generate enemies if the if you're making a game that has enemies. But essentially, the basics of our dungeon are already finished. We we have our walls. We know what our dungeon is going to be looking like. Yeah. That will be all for today. Bye.